Hello, I'm Erin Halverson, and thank you for joining me for Rag Rugs by Erin. I'm so glad you're with me today. This is just going to be a little short video. It's not going to be a whole rug, but it's a little new technique that I've been using to start my oval rugs, and um, I'm really liking it. So I wanted to share it, and maybe some of you will find it's a nice, easy way to hide your original tail. So you can then tune into how to make an oval rug if you want to continue on and get other details of how to finish this rug or how to move along. I'll also go ahead and put that down in the description, attach that, so you'll be able to find that real quick. So anyways, let's go ahead and get started. Um, we're going to be using, um, I'm guessing, is that inch and a quarter, inch and a half uh, sheet yarn probably? It's inch and a half sheet yarn probably, and it's pretty stringy. Um, but this was given to me. I have the best friends. Um, I have a friend that was making rugs and now she's involved with her grandchildren and she's an incredible artist so she's painting a little bit more. And she says, hey Erin, why don't you take the stuff I've already got, which is so nice. So thank you, um, Lynn, for sharing this with me. So um, let me go ahead and get started. Mr. Cameraman, if you want to come around to the back so you get a nice good view. And um, not only am I also doing, besides how I'm starting my rugs a little different, I'm also doing it um, with a little bit bigger hooks, and I'm also starting it with only eight um, crochets, um, chain stitches in many instances, or a very small beginning. So you're going to do a slip knot here, just like all my other rugs. You're going to cross over with the long, and you're going to pull through the center like this, and now you have your slip knot. Okay, and uh, there's other ways to do slip knots. This is not the only way, but this is how I like to do my slip knot, and so I try to show you the same way over and over again. If you have another way, by all means, go ahead and do that. So what I do is I take the tail. This is a particularly long tail. I didn't need to make it quite this big, but I do make it probably uh, more than 12 inches. Um, so what you're going to do is you're going to start your um, chain stitches, but you're just going to cross over and pull it through. And you've got both of them right here, both your tail and the piece you're working with. There's one, cross over and pull it through. There's two, cross over and pull it through. Three, cross over and pull it through. Four, five, six, and then and you see you've lost it, which we'll cut it off if we need to. Seven. Make sure that it's loose enough so you can get back through it. This is a 16 millimeter, and this is one of the hooks that you can um, buy on my website. And this is made from Poplar. All the new ones are made from Poplar because it's a renewable resource here in the United States. Um, so we try to be responsible with what we make, and the rest of them are reclaimed. So then you're going to turn it just like all the other ovals, and remember to keep, we work from right to left, you're going to go into each one of these holes. So really that's all I wanted to show you, but I'm going to quickly show you how to get to your first two corners, um, and then you can go on from there. You're going to go into the first hole, and you're going to do a single crochet. You're going to grab your material. You have two, one, two, cross over and pull them both off. Okay, you're going to go into your second hole, making sure you try to keep this even and not twisting your original chain stitch. Go into the hole, cross over, turn and pull it through. One, two, cross over and pull them both off. Both off. That's your second single crochet. I just painted my fingernails, so I'm trying to be careful. <laughs> Sorry, guys. Um, then we went to um, the number three hole. I'm going to go a little faster, pull it through, cross over, pull them both off, both off. Okay. and pull them both off. I, like, I particularly like stripes, to be honest with you. Um, I don't get as many stripes as I would like to work with, but I particularly like stripes. I like plaids, too. You know, I like them all, but... Uh, uh, I particularly like stripes. I just like the way they look in your rug. So we're almost to the end. And so here's where we started. I'm going to find that hole. And you always go three, a minimum, into this hole. Usually three will do it. You do three single crochets into the last hole. So there's one, because you're trying to get around this arch. Two. 
and then one more usually do it. Now I've just taught Mr. Cameraman, which is my husband Lyle, to start crocheting because he's going to make rugs because I'm going to be traveling hopefully um, with our RV and meeting more of my viewers and so he thought if he's going to have to be with me not only will he do a little filming maybe along the way he'll be able to help some of you when I'm teaching you so uh, I think that's really awesome of my husband to do that <laughs> he's amazing so we're going to go back up the holes and we're going to get to the I want to show you how to get into the other end and you're just finding your holes okay there we go I don't think that's a good hole Yep, that's where I want it to be. Okay, so you just go one single crochet all the way back up. That's why I like to make it loose at the beginning. And get into all your holes. I really think this is another video that shows um, how to do this. Uh, the one that shows how to make a beginner over rug is probably a much better video to give you more detail that's slower but because I wanted to show you that technique and many of you if this is your first time will be frustrated because I didn't show you enough information okay so now we're at the other end we did three in this last hole okay to get around there we did three single crochets we're going to actually do two in this one one two and then here on the other one right here your other hole we're going to do two more over there to get all the way around and that should be enough sometimes it isn't it depends on how tight you crochet Lyle crocheted really tight and he was having to do more getting around and also he had a lot of drag um, certain sheet yarn has more drag than others and so he had to add more and I do that I find that when I'm teaching classes sometimes people have one and we have to add more so there was two in that hole and two going to be in this one in the same hole okay the comfort level of having all this shaft right here is amazing you get so much more comfortable than some of the short ones and also you have this to help you regulate there's newer hooks out now that are less they're inexpensive little plastic ones and there's pushing in right here and you do not have this area to help you regulate your stitches um, and I feel like it's necessary at least for me so okay you're going to proceed on up we're going to do one more and we're going to call that it and you can watch one of those other videos and I will also have it attached down there also remember right now I'm running the situation where I'm asking for your strips to be sent in to 2112 Gardenia Avenue in Sebring Florida um, and I am then going to be using for my next prototype rug so um, it's awesome if you're willing to participate. And you can see one of the other videos that gives a little bit more details about that. But I wanted to show you this nice little te uh, technique. Also, you could just trim this off, give it a little tug, and your original tail is disappeared. I wanted to show you because it's really simple. So, okay, you have a great day, and join me next time.